All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Catherine. I'm from Hennepin County, and today we're going to learn about our heads again. I know last week you all did something with your heads too, but this week we're going to do something just a little different. I'm going to share my screen really quickly here. Wherever my screen is. This one? This one. All right, again, welcome to Wiggle Wednesdays. I'm Catherine from Hennepin County, um, and I'm a local extension educator here with you today to talk about our head. So today we're gonna to be talking about our feelings. Our feelings are so important because like in our 4-H pledge, we pledge our head to clearer thinking. If you want to unmute yourself, go ahead and tell me why do you think emotions and feelings are important? Because they tell you when you're happy, sad, or mad. Right. Anyone else? Anyone else have any other ideas why our emotions and feelings are important? Because when you get in a fight, you try and stay happy or not be mad. Oh, I really like our answers. They're really positive, and you re and I hear that you all want to make sure you stay happy and joyful, right? Now, let me tell you, like, let's clarify why our feelings and emotions are important. Because, yes, those are all really good reasons. They help us build relationships with other people, such as our friends, our families, and our teachers, and they help us survive. Could you imagine what would happen if we didn't feel scared, if we saw a ferocious lion standing in front of us? We didn't feel scared at all. We'd probably just stand there and let them maybe take a nibble at us. Those same feelings of fear also happen when maybe you are at the top of the playground and you feel like you might want to jump, but there's that fear of danger and our body is telling us that's pretty dangerous. I don't think it's a good idea to jump because our body wants to make sure that you stay healthy and safe. Emotions also help us understand someone and give us these social cues. Social cues is kind of like these very invisible in bo body languages that give us an idea of if they're happy, if they're sad, if they're angry, to help someone or celebrate someone. Like now we are going to do a quick game. Every, if you can turn on your cameras, please do so. We are going to play a quick game of show me your emotions. So when I say an emotion, I want you to show me what it looks like. So show me when, what it looks like when you are mad. <clears throat> really unhappy, right? Frowning faces, wrinkled little foreheads, maybe crossing your arms like, mm -mm, I'm not happy, right? Show me what happens when, what it looks like when you're super happy. Happy, right? Like I'm sitting in a chair today because I broke my foot. But, and I can't jump, but sometimes when people are happy, they wiggle their bodies, they are jumping and everything, but they're just so happy they can't contain it. Now, show me what it looks like when you're scared. A little bit of wrinkled faces, maybe just a little shy. You're, I see a lot of people hunching their shoulders like, like this, right? It means you're scared. Now, show me what it looks like when you are so bored. Yep, body language. See all those social cues of putting my, putting my hands to my face, tilting my head back. All those different things of what it looks like to be bored. If you're just tuning in with us today, we're just playing a quick emotion game to understand what it looks like when you are angry, happy, or sad. Now, show me again what it looks like when you're angry. And what does it sound like if you're angry? Go ahead and unmute yourself and show me, tell me what it sounds like when you're angry. <clears throat> kind of like a grunting noise, right? Like a gorilla. <clears throat> so now show me what it looks like when you are nervous. <clears throat> Nervous, right? Still a little bit hunched shoulders, 
still a little bit like worried phase. All these emotions that you have, they're healthy. It's healthy to be scared. It's healthy to be sad. It's healthy to cry. And it's healthy to be angry too. But the question is, how do we control our emotions? Can someone tell me what you do to control your emotions when you're angry, you're sad, or you're scared? What do you do? You take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. That's a really good thought. Taking a deep breath helps so much. Get that oxygen in your brain and help you realize, oh, I'm not angry at you. I'm just angry at what happened. Anyone else? What do you do when you're sad, angry, or frustrated? I, um go in my room to just be alone yep and she shuts the door behind her <laughs> and that's okay too sometimes you need to get away from people to understand that i just need some time alone to think about what happened all right the last few emotions i want you to show me show me the show me a really really cranky face like it's different from being unhappy a really cranky face like Yeah, it's not the happiest motion, but you're cranky. Now, show me what happens when your parents tell you you can't go outside today. <laughs> Some of you look like you're angry. Some of you look like you're a little disappointed. There's a range of emotions here. Now, tell me what it looks like when your parents tell you, do you want some free ice cream today? <laughs> look at those smiles perk up. When our mouth stretches and hits the corners of our faces to show a smile, those are one of the social cues that we are, of us understanding, oh, they're really happy. If you see a family member or friends feeling unhappy or sad, what can you do to help them feel better? You sit by them. Sit by them. Anyone else? You can give them a compliment. Compliment. A compliment's always nice. I like getting compliments when I'm sad. You could make friends with them. You could make friends with them. That's a really nice gesture, too. Maybe someone's just sad because they don't have someone to hang out with them at recess that day, right? Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to... Does anyone like storybooks? Do you like storybooks? Good. So I have a book today called... When I Feel Angry by Cornelia, Cornelia Maud Spellman. Okay. When somebody makes fun of me, I feel angry. I feel angry when I have to stop a game at the best part and clean up my room. How many of you feel the same way? <laughs> or when we finally get to go swimming, but it rains. Yeah. Definitely keep raising your hand if you feel like, if you feel the same way, okay? It makes me mad when I try my hardest, but I can't make my drawings look right or just crumple it up and throw it away. If the teacher says I was talking, and I wasn't, I get angry. It isn't fair. Yeah. It's not fun to be blamed for something you didn't do. Anger is strong, a hot feeling. When I feel angry, I want to say something mean or yell or hit. How many of you feel like that? It's okay to say yes. But feeling like I want to is not the same as doing it. Feelings can't hurt anyone or get me in trouble. But doing can. Yeah. When I want to say something mean or yell or hit, there are other things I can do. I can go away from the person I'm angry with. Angry with. I can take deep breaths and blow the air out hard to send the anger out of me. Everyone take a deep, long breath in and out. 
and out. Remember, every time you're angry, take a deep breath and get that anger out of your body. I can make my anger cooler by running, riding my bike, or by doing something I really like to do. After a while, I feel better. I can have a good time again. Sometimes when parents or teachers tell you, okay, when you are feeling better, you can come back and play with us, or you can come back and join the group. You ever hear a teacher say that? Sometimes, yeah, okay. Seeing some things that make me angry can't be changed, like when our team loses. Or my favorite thing gets spoiled. So some things that may get spoiled could be like, oh, your favorite cake got really old and doesn't taste good anymore because you forgot to eat it. And that's some things you can't change. But sometimes when I feel angry, it means something needs to be different. Maybe it's me. Maybe I need to rest or cry. Maybe I need time to be by myself. Maybe someone else needs to be different. Maybe someone needs to be nicer to me or stop being unfair. I might need help figuring it all out. So what she means by that, if you're angry and you need someone to help you figure it out, it's okay to talk to someone why you're angry with a friend, a parent, a teacher, anyone that is willing to listen to you talk. Then I can change what I'm doing or I can tell someone else what I need. I can listen to the other person tell too. Talking and listening usually make things better. When I feel angry, I don't have to stay angry. I can cool down so I don't hurt someone or get in tr into trouble. I can go away. I can take deep breaths and blow them out. I can run, ride my bike, or play with my toys. I can rest or cry. I can figure out what made me angry or ask someone to help me. I can talk, I can listen. When I feel angry, I know what to do. So everyone show me what you can do as in like a body movement or action to get all the angers out. What can you do? Yep, some of you can just wiggle it out. Some of you can just move your hands, run around. For me, because I'm sitting down in my chair and I can't really get out of my chair, I'm just gonna kick my feet up. Just kick my feet out to the side, kick, kick, kick. Because sometimes when I'm angry and I can't walk or run, I can at least kick in my chair or just throw my hands in the air or move my arms side to side, kind of like a really quick exercise. Because as soon as you try to work all of those angers and emotions out, whew, you get a little tired. And then you don't feel angry anymore. You kind of feel just tired, right? All right, that's it for today. If you have any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself. But otherwise, I hope you can join us next week for another session of Wiggle Wednesdays. Take what you learned today and make sure to stay happy and healthy and clear your minds, okay? Bye, everyone.